Hey guys, today I want to talk about something that I think is going to be highly effective for any leader or manager, whether you're in churches or organizations, it doesn't matter, it's applicable to everybody, and that's 11 promises from a manager to their employees. So these 11 promises from a manager or a leader, whatever your organization calls it, uh, I believe will be highly effective for no matter where you are, like I said earlier. And going into number one, um, this is all about meeting structures and promises that you're going to be sharing with your team, whether that be a, a one person or your whole team on Slack or whatever. So number one is we'll have a weekly one-on-one. -on -one. I'll never cancel this meeting, but you can cancel it whenever you like. It's your time. So keep in mind, we are the CSO, the Chief Servant Operator. And I think going through this process of saying, hey, we're gonna have a weekly one-on-one. -on -one. What works time for you? This is what time works for me. And making sure they know, hey, I will never cancel this meeting. Obviously, there's always things, maybe family or uh, we're, we're understanding of that. But what this is saying is, hey, this is your time. I'm valuing your time over mine right now, and I want to make sure you are a priority because what's on your calendar is what you prioritize. So number two, our one-on-one -on -one agenda will be in the meeting invite, so we remember important topics, but you're always free to use this time for what's ever on your mind. Holy smokes, this is going to be so huge to get it out in advance, get it clear topics, and maybe set it up to actually every week. We're talking through the same three to five things. Um, and there's a video a couple weeks ago I posted about how, what questions to ask in a one-on-one. -on -one. But again, this is their time. Maybe they have something they want to discuss. And something that I've actually been processing that I haven't had a solution to yet, so maybe you can help me out. But I don't like the question, hey, how are you doing? I think it's super open-ended. And I think we all know the two answers. All good, all busy. Uh, make sure to ask really great questions, but get it out in advance to make sure that they can come in and not waste your time as well. So number three, when I schedule a meeting with you, I'll always say when I schedule it, what it's meant to be about. I will not schedule meetings without an agenda. Have you ever been a part of an open-ended meeting where you're like, ah, I think I'm going to get fired. Uh, make sure the agenda is out, but make sure it's clear and don't change the agenda. And if there is an agenda, don't schedule the meeting. Don't have a meeting to have a meeting. We all have stuff going on. You've got stuff going on. I got stuff going on. Uh, I want to make sure this is effective and I want to make sure you feel seen in this meeting. Number four, when I drop into your den, when I drop into your DMs, I'll always say hi and why. No suspense, no small talk while you're wondering what I want. Have you ever had that small talk conversation on Slack or Google, whatever they have, chats, I believe, uh, Google Meets, wherever it is, getting the message, hey, hey, bud, hey. It's like, dude, what do you want? Why are you messaging me? I used to have a manager who would answer the phone and just say my name and pause. Like, I don't know what you want. Make sure that you are clear. No small talk. We're not here to just be buddy buddies. Uh, we want to get to the point and I don't want to waste your time. Number five, news or announcements that significantly impact you, your work or your team will come from me directly in a one-on-one, -on -one, not revealed in a big meeting. So my wife and I just literally went through this. We found the three to four couples that we didn't want them to find out some news from a big stage or from a meeting that I wanted them to find out at dinner or coffee. And this is imperative. Maybe you are changing organizations. Maybe there's something going on structurally. Uh, make sure you tell them in the one-on-one -on -one, uh, or even get to coffee. Or if you don't live in the same city, understand. But if you're in, you're in the same city, you need to meet in person um, to be able to share some bigger news because you never want to be the person that somebody thinks about that it, when they hear something, the first response is, they should have told me. And that just creates bitterness and they will definitely not follow you as your leader. So you'll get feedback from me when it's fresh. There will be no feedback in your performance review that you're hearing for the first time. Maybe you have monthly, quarterly, yearly reviews, um, all the feedback that you're giving. I have a 24 hour rule with any person I ever lead. Hey, in within 24 hours, you need to be on the phone or on Zoom or in person with the person to challenge them because of what you saw. 
Again, we're not we're not challenging habits or just things with our hands. We're challenging character. We're challenging heart. Um, we're challenging the things that actually matter. So, on their feedback reports or on those year reviews, if they're hearing hearing something from the first time, that is completely on you and not them. Number seven, I trust you to manage your own time. You don't need to clear with me in advance your time. Holy smokes. Micromanagers get absolutely nothing done. They're not leaders. It doesn't say micro leaders, it says micromanager. We trust people with their time. They understand. Obviously, there's some accountability that you can actually have in there, but the reality is people are adults and adults have their schedules down. Maybe it isn't 10 to 5 or 8 to 5 or 7 to 2, whatever your calendar is, it doesn't matter. Are they being effective? Are they producing? What I love to do is measure fruit, measure results. Don't measure the little nitty gritty stuff because now you're just a micromanager, like I said again. Give them space, give them the freedom to lead because leaders produce leaders. Number eight, your work gets done your way. My focus is on the outcomes, not output. I'll say that, that part again. My focus is on the outcomes, not the outputs. Kind of like what I said earlier. Once we're clear on where we need to go, how to get there is up to you. If I ever find it necessary to suggest a specific approach, I will supply an example. The best sentence you can start is, hey, can I submit something to you? Can I give you an idea? Not here is, can I, may I, from your side of being polite and being a great friend. But hey, we're focused on outcomes, not out, not outputs, okay? I want, I want outcomes, I want results, I want fruit. I don't care how we get there. I, as a leader, am imperative to give you the vision so that vision is what you run with. So it might be a lack of vision, it might be a lack of clarity, it might be the wrong person to roll, whatever it is. Be a person who is focused on the vision and where we're going, not the work of the person. Because again, you are a micromanager. Number nine, a team is strongest when it's working together, looking after one another and taking care of one another. Please look to your left and to your right for opportunities to help your colleagues. Please ask for help when you need it. Nobody works alone. Nobody works alone. I don't care if you have a startup team of six or you have a team of 10,000 and you're the CEO watching this somehow. Nobody works alone. And again, I work from home. I understand that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about mentally. Hey, we're, we're in this together. Look to the left and to the right. There's somebody else who also is going through what you're going through. Hey, you know what? I, as your friend, but also your leader, I'm going through that too, man. Hey, look around, look around the office and see everybody else. They're all going through something too. And if you can find a perfect employee, don't hire them because they're not real. Um, everybody's going through something and our team is the strength is in unity. Unity is everything. Not unity is conformity. No, no, no. It's not. We're not, we're not looking for you to conform. We're looking for you to be a part and say yes to the same vision. Number 10, I trust you to skip level and talk to my manager or other senior management about anything you feel is relevant. You don't need to clear it with me and I'm not going to get weird about it when you do. I'll kind of leave that one in itself. Guys, I've been a part of teams where it is weird to skip the level. Um, you kind of feel shame. You feel like you're getting pointed at, you're getting judged. The reality is every boss has a boss. Every leader has a leader. And if they don't, they're not a boss or a leader. There always should be accountability. And if you've seen something or you've experienced something or on the opposite, if you want to give positive encouragement, go to them, go to their leader. They deserve it. And they also deserve feedback if they're doing something wrong. Everybody's doing something wrong and everybody has ideas that you can challenge. So and if you have a leader who's been acting weird or they're feeling like making sure you're the problem or gaslighting you, it's probably best to just remove yourself. Um, number 11, I will attribute credit appropriately to you and your team. I will never exaggerate my own role or minimize your contribution. Basically what this one is saying is, I'm gonna always give you the credit. Leaders never get the credit. And if you're a leader who wants credit, that's just pride. You don't wanna be the person who's seeking credit. 
Uh, you want to be the person who celebrates other people. And when you celebrate other people and give away the accomplishments, and again, you're not over-exaggerating. Um, you're not over-exaggerating losses either. You're a person who sees somebody doing something well, and you can publicly affirm that. And even when you go to senior level management, people above you, make sure you're giving them the wins. Giving your team the wins in those meetings is what I mean. Making sure that it's never you, it's always, hey, we're doing this, we're winning. James did such a good job at this, Tyler did, whoever it is, make sure you are celebrating them, giving them the platform. Here's a couple things that I would love for you to add to the bottom of your notes or your email or maybe even your SOP when somebody's getting hired. If all this sounds good to you, those 11 things I just said, I hope you can reciprocate by giving me this one thing I need the most, the truth. Just give me the truth. Hey, I'm having a really bad mental health day. I'm not gonna pick up the phone and do calls. Okay, great, I can, I can accept that. I can help you move from here to here. Hey, my wife and I are fighting. Hey, I'm tired. Hey, I, I was stayed up late. Hey, whatever it is, give me the truth. Because if you're lying to your leader to get away from them, if you probably have the wrong leader. I'll always welcome your thoughts, listen patiently, and never respond defensively. If we trust each other, we can learn and grow together, and that's what I want to work with you. So I hope these 11 things have helped you guys. I believe that organizational strength is found in leadership. Leadership is everything. Uh, there's millions of leadership content out there, and I just hope that through these 10 to 15 minute videos can add so much value to you uh, that you would reciprocate it to me. Make sure you liking, subscribing, sharing with a friend, maybe watch it with your team, share it with your senior leaders, whoever they are. Um, they deserve to be giving content for them to grow because um, if you ain't growing, you're dying. I promise you, there's no plateauing in leadership. You are growing or you're dying. And we wanna be people who are growing. So thank you seriously so much. Means the world to me. Make sure you're liking, subscribing, like I said. We're creating videos every single week.